I'm um, here to talk to you about MarTech, marketing technology, uh, a world I've become increasingly familiar with over the past year since I joined Adobe. Prior to that, I was at iReturn Marketing uh, for about four years, where I had uh, a little bit of first-hand experience in the ad tech space. And I imagine most folks in this room have seen a little bit of both, or at least one. So I won't read the definition to you that's on the screen, and I know Vivian's going to double-click on that stuff later. But I want to shed some light on what this kind of intersection really looks like now, because today's marketer beats the best of both worlds. Uh, I saw a solution called a data management platform. Many of you are probably familiar with what it does, but at a high level, it creates audience segments that can be passed to different channels. We want to stitch together devices, we want to have a profile, we want to action that profile, and all these different mediums. In that tech, the DMP is really where it originated. The data management platform five years ago helped people in the advertising space, in the digital advertising space, control the frequency with which they served ads, uh, control retargeting so it didn't get overexposed or borderline creepy. So the ad tech space had its hooks into this platform, into this solution. And a lot of the early adopters came from that world. And now we see it move from my right to a little bit more towards my left, where those are maybe the initial use cases and the first thing an advertiser would do when onboarding that type of solution. Whereas the marketing side of the house is really interested in it. And I think David had some, or sorry, Dave had some really interesting points in his presentation about personalization. In the ad tech world, when we think of personalization, we're usually thinking of being dynamic and creative, serving up the most relevant content in a banner ad or pre-roll or what have you. In the marketing tech space, personalization and customer journey is something quite different. They're looking at a unified profile. Sure, the ad tech part is great, but they want to make sure they serve up the most relevant content when you land on their website, when you open their app, when you see a recommendation engine for different products. The marketing tech space is a little bit more concerned about the customer journey across all channels, the ad tech space, more so in the advertising channel. And we've seen tremendous consolidation between these two worlds. Salesforce just bought Crux. We at Adobe just bought Tube Mobile, massive delivery platform for video advertising. We're looking at Group M. I think yesterday I read an ad exchanger. Group M is making a tremendous investment in data and digital. We're taking Brian Gleason, who used to run the trading desk side of their business, and putting him more on the, on the data side of the business for their clients which I think is a, a trend that is very well established and, and close to being symbolic. Agencies, software companies, ad tech, media agencies, everyone wants to get their hands on the data, right? The data, the CRM, the stitched profile, that is the connective tissue between these two worlds. I think in Adobe's general point of view on MarTech and ad tech, kind of all consolidates into to one big picture called the experience wave. We break it up into three different waves. The first is the back office wave. 20, 30 years ago, we had systems, whether they were ERP or inventory, <laughs> we, we had technology really supporting the business decisions that were being made in the back office. Five years ago, 10 years ago, you're seeing more of the CRM wave, whether that's Salesforce or somewhere else. Today, we consider that the experience wave. In every single channel, every single digital touch point, every marketer, every brand is trying to deliver a relevant experience. And that is incredibly difficult to do. Someone might know who you are when you log in here, but they don't necessarily know when you log in here or at work or wherever else. And both the marketing tech and the ad tech side of this ecosystem are trying to solve that riddle. Ad tech is trying to solve it, so when they retarget you with messages, you're retargeted accordingly across three different devices. Whereas marketing tech is trying to solve that riddle so that when you log into their website to purchase something, if you already look in the app, maybe it's in your cart. Or maybe something more relevant or a complementary product is there already. So this experience wave and this digital transformation is tremendously influenced by MarTech. Right? MarTech is, you think marketing, you didn't necessarily think of where 25% of the transactions used to happen, but every single retailer in Canada is trying to get 25% of their transaction online maybe 50, maybe 60. So brick and mortar is changing this as well. So standout customer experience drive business impact. We know that. We know that. Now, in regards to Adobe, uh, people are probably looking at me right now and thinking, man, PDF sucks, or Creative Cloud's expensive, or what do you know about marketing? <laughs> uh, Adobe's foray into marketing tech came many moons ago. You might see Amateur up here. That should ring a bell. That's Adobe Analytics. 
I think 60 to 70 percent, I think that's the number I heard, of organizations that pay for web analytics use Adobe Analytics. So it's a massive solution and it represents a tremendous footprint in the marketing tech ecosystem. It's a fundamental foundational layer. Then you see these other acquisitions coming around 2012, 2013, and you see it goes from just analytics to data management. I guess into the world of campaign management and email from the Neil Lane acquisition. And you realize that this marketing tech ecosystem is converging with ad tech at an incredible rate. So there are some very notable trends shaping the, the mad tech world that we're living in now. And one of the first, as I alluded to earlier, is the experience as a service player. Again, if I am driving in my car and on my radio, say I'm driving it, Talus, which I'm not and I want to, but if I were driving a, a, a Tesla, sorry, I can't drive a Talus. Um, <laughs> I'm driving a Tesla, if you're listening to the radio, the radio has the game on. I'm listening to the Maple Leafs and the Oilers last night. I step out of my car, I grab my phone. Right away, I see it on my phone. I walk into the house, I open the house, TV's on, explain the game, exactly where I left off. Go upstairs, ready to nap between whatever, the third period, and over time, next thing you know, it's on a tablet. That type of experience can probably be realized right now if we dedicated resources. And every single brand, not just the Netflix of the world or the OTT providers, but every single brand has to think about that experience as a service. To, live, to deliver that service, you need oodles and oodles of data. I think between the digital consultancies we're seeing entering the space, the Accentures and the Deloitte's, the media agencies, the software providers like Adobe, the Googles and the Facebooks, we're all trying to get our hands on the data. He or she that controls the data controls a lot of this experience. Great quote from Bob McDonald from TNG. We want a one-to-one -one relationship with seven billion customers. Can't have that without data. And lastly, all the different delivery mechanisms, all the different channels, all the different platforms. Where do you apply said data and how do you apply it? This is a this is an ecosystem that's trying to determine who will own that next space. So what's the end state? The end state is all of these different channels seamlessly working together. Right now in ad tech, you might be looking at a little bit of the display channel, you might be looking at the mobile channel, you might be looking at site side a little. Uh, in marketing tech, you might be looking more so direct mail, emailers, social. In any event, every single major marketing company, from the digital agencies, the media agencies, the software, and to the, the ad tech platforms, are trying to get more involved across all of these different places to eliminate the disjointed experience at the top. And that is a big challenge. <laughs> uh, and I think the company that does that best uh, will prevail. And the acquisitions you're seeing and the worlds that, and the roles that these consulting agencies and media agencies are playing are so aware of this, are so aware of the big picture, uh, that two or three years ago the acquisitions and decisions that were being made are coming to fruition now. Uh, I'm working with a couple of uh, clients in different sectors, banking, telco, whatever. And we have people coming to the table talking about five years from now what the personalization story will look like when someone hits your site and logs in. And when someone hits your site and logs in five years from now, the amount of data and the amount of, amount of intel and the impact that they can have across every one of these worlds is truly tremendous. I'm going to hand it over to Naveen now who's going to talk a little bit about the ad tech side. And I think we'll probably go back and forth maybe. Thanks, Andrew. Um, guys, first of all, I want to welcome each and every one of you guys here. The whole purpose for this event was to get some really incredibly smart people to communicate with each other. Hopefully, we'll provide you a little bit of knowledge to network. But this is an opportunity from all across the industry to get together and learn. So my uh, sort of 10 minutes is going to be a little bit adding on to what Andrew just said. This is a black swan. Anybody know what the black swan theory is? What? <laughs> okay. So this is a theory that was very much related to economics. Um, it was a theory that was developed by Nassim Talib, if I'm not mistaken. Yes? Uh, it's good to have a professor. <laughs> um, so Nassim Talib basically said, that a black swan event is something that is extremely rare. Most swans that we all see are white. A black swan event usually happens once or twice in our lifetime. 
You could look at the dot com bust. Um, you could look at in 1998 when the stock market fell and, and collapsed. You could probably look at the housing uh, bubble that happened uh, in the recent recession. These are historically spread across four, five, six different years. In 2016, we have looked at, I've identified, and, and do, please do correct me, uh, there's probably some other ones. I have seen four black swan events in one year. The first black swan event was, which no one expected, was the exit of the UK from the European Union. Completely unexpected. The second black swan event was probably the steep, heavy decline in oil prices. No one expected that. And that's had massive ramifications globally, but also here in Canada, particularly if you go out west. The third uh, massive, massive uh, unexpected black swan event has been the recent elections. Mm. Point to our, there you go. <laughs> Completely unexpected. And the final one, which was a recent one, which very few people may know about, was in India, the Prime Minister of India decided to fight fraud. And what he did was, literally overnight, he discontinued the 1,000 rupee note and the 500 rupee note. Just discontinued it. Made a press release and said, this note does not exist. There is absolutely pandemonium that is going on in India right now. Because the housewives who kept that money for themselves in large notes can no longer use it. Large business owners who have kept it in their safety deposit box cannot use these notes anymore. That was the Black Swan event. Now, my theory of the Black Swan event is people say the Black Swan event is something sudden. And I disagree with that. And this is probably the most important thing that I would probably want to leave with you guys with is black swan events, although they seem sudden, there's a rumbling that happens. You look at the British exit from the UK, you look at the US elections, there's a rumbling. We often don't take notice of the small signals, but if we really, I'm telling it's too late. So the point of this whole presentation and what was presented by David and by Andrew and myself, is guys, there's a rumbling that's happening. And it may have already happened. <laughs> the TV show no longer exists. The good old days of buying media are gone. Ad networks being a little bit controversial are pretty much dead. If all you're going to do is buy media from a publisher in a simple way, without any analytics, without any insight, and just calling up somebody, or doing a pre-buy, a programmatic buy of 500,000 impressions somewhere in January without understanding the audience, that doesn't exist anymore. Or a publisher who's saying, you know what, let me get a box seat at the Raptors and really take out my agency guys and then hopefully I'll get a buy. It doesn't work anymore, guys. Those days are done. The publishers are right now trying to figure out which way to go. The agencies right now are trying to figure out which way to go. The MarTech players are figuring out which way to go, whether they consolidate or buy. And the ad tech players, including ourselves, are trying to figure out which way to go. Right? But the good old days of buying media, they're done. So what's happening? And again, this goes to, there's a theme about today. The theme is that technology is actually changing everything. It doesn't mean that tomorrow you guys are all going to be replaced and I'll be speaking to 200 robots, right? But there is a theme that technology definitely is driving everything. Now, I don't know if you heard the introduction, but I've only been in this industry for three years. I was a banker. And banking is a very safe place to be um, because nothing really changes. In the last 36 months, I don't think I've seen things change as dramatically as I have in my lifetime. Um, there has just been absolute chaos and pandemonium. But what's happened is it's all been led by tech, particularly within our industry. What we've tried to do with tech is actually try to simplify things. That's been the whole thing, right? You incorporate tech and you're going to simplify things. 
in my view, what's happened is we've kind of opened up a Pandora's box. And I'll go through this. This is the advertiser. We've got some advertisers in the room. And I'll go through this thing very quickly. All you want to do is actually buy a publisher, right? Simple thing. You used to work 10, 15 years ago, you pick up a phone and connect with a publisher or your agency would do that. Now, welcome to the digital world, the new ecosystem. Now you have a media agency, which now will actually have a trading desk, which may need to have measurements, then needs to have verification. You may need to find somebody else to do retargeting. Oh my god, you need an ad exchange. Which is the ad exchange actually connects to do some SSPs. The SSPs actually connect to some DSPs. So you have to choose within the two to three hundred DSPs that are out there. And by the way, there's about 70 or 80 SSPs that you need to incorporate in terms of fraud and everything else. Which then you go back to the verification of the measurement. Well, then you have the old ad networks. But oh, wait, hold on. We need data. We need good data. So you need to have data suppliers. You need to go to Oracle, IBM, or, or somebody else. Then you have DMPs. And then you have the creative side. Let's not forget the creative side. All of this now needs to be managed. That's a lot of shit. Right? There is a huge complexity that needs to be managed. And the reason why I think this thing has been accelerated is because two parties right now are actually taking 85% of the digital budget. It's a big number, right? We are leaving our fate into two companies. Now there's nothing wrong with these companies, but we right now have a duopoly. And the nervous thing about this duopoly is that it's a one-way system. Andrew and I were talking about that where it's a walled garden. You can keep feeding things into it, right? It's like Pac-Man, it just keeps absorbing stuff, right? But nothing really comes out the way you want it to, in terms of the information and the details. So really, what's happened is, this has accelerated this. Now this graph actually shows, was uh, shown to me when I was in San Francisco last week by the Luma Partners. Um, and they had a conference where they had 150 CEOs, all from technology. And you walk through, and I'm happy to share this presentation and this slide, because it really gives you that rumbling that I talked to you guys about. This was ad tech, you had a whole bunch of Google acquisitions, and they were setting themselves up. Then you had Adobe, and they were starting to set themselves up. But only within the war tech space. Oracle was doing the same thing. And then all of a sudden, you see Google starting to come in. Sorry, not Google, but Facebook. Acquisitions, acquisitions. Here, in 2013, that's when the rumbling started to happen, right? The first signs of that rumbling. You had Oracle start to acquire data logics, Axiom, Oracle, Google again, Nielsen, Newstar, and as Andrew pointed out, you had Salesforce, Crux, Oracle, all of these things. There's this consolidation. All these people are building up what I believe is a data arms race. It's a data arms race. We've been talking about data all this time. I truly believe this is where we're heading. But collecting data is only one part. And MarTech does the one piece, but then it has to be actionable. There has to be a message to the person that you're trying to communicate with. So I'm going to leave you because there's a lot of other stuff that we want to cover today with three simple takeaways. The first one is, and this is a request, more so, than, more so than anything else. Everyone needs to be in the same room. It doesn't need to be this big, but everyone needs to be in the same room. What do I mean by that? The MarTech guys have to be in the same conversation with your AdTech guys. The AdTech guys have to be in the same room with your creative guys. The creative guys have to be in the same room with your media guys. And they all have to be in the same room with your advertiser. Right? This can't be 15 different meetings spread out over two or three months and hopefully we'll come and stitch something together. Right? That has got to change. It's got to change fast. Someone needs to be the conductor. Right? Somebody needs to say, I'm going to lead this. Now, whether it's the advertiser that says, you know what? 
I'm not going to use an agency, I'm going to be the conductor. Okay. If you're the conductor, then are you going to give away all the other stuff that you're focusing on to take charge of what I just outlined as the new Pandora's box? Because that's a lot of work. Or are you going to work and have the agency be the conductor? And is that the new role of the agency? We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Or the new people that are coming in are, and when you pointed it out, Accenture, Deloitte, Accenture Digital, brand new arm, Deloitte Digital, and they're coming in from the CEO level. And they're saying, look, we've already done your enterprise solutions. You don't need an agency. All you need is technology and us. So let us put it together. Because the agency guys, they're not getting it. And we know how to put enterprise solutions together. We'll do it for you. Someone has to be the conductor. We, here today, we don't have Accenture, we don't have Deloitte, not that I know. We have an agency. You guys are our partners. So often I've been, in some presentations, been known as the, the, uh, the dark person that comes in with bad news. I'm just giving you guys that rumbling that I'm hearing. That's all. Mobile. Even today, or even this week, I've had a couple of different conversations. And mobile still is that last piece, right? Whereas even while some of these presentations were going on, while we're waiting to come in, everyone was on their device. If they're not busy, the first thing is, well, if I'm not busy, let me pretend that I'm busy by just doing this, right? You wake up with an alarm, you wake up, you check your email, your, everything is done on the mobile device. But when it comes to media buying, it's the last thing on the agenda. It's the last thing that we want to connect the dots. Guys, it really, really needs to become, if not the first thing, at, well, it should be the first thing, right? But it's got to be even a lot higher priority than it is today. The last thing. This kind of goes to what David said. Build, test, and iterate. Rome was not built in a day. That's a famous saying. And the other famous saying is, there's no magic bullet. But I think too often, again, in my only young career as an ad tech guy in three years, I still don't see enough of build it and break it fast, test and iterate, which is more technology focused. But I think that mindset needs to go very much more towards the agency world. And again, just a little bit of advice. And I'm going to leave you with this. And I truly believe that it is time to change the way that we look at mad tech. Right? Because if we don't, you guys will have a black swan event sooner than you guys expect. Right? 